Hello class, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving break. I'm sorry that I didn't post any videos over break. It got really, really hectic up in Chicago. Uh, the weather was actually really nice though. It was pretty warm until the day after Thanksgiving. Then it got freezing. It was only like high of 35. So I'm definitely glad to be back. Sorry I wasn't in class today. It was just really hectic with all of the travel yesterday and I wasn't feeling well. But I'll be back tomorrow and we'll get going with these lessons. Section 6-4 is what you're watching tonight for homework. This is properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares, and we have four different objectives. The first one is that we can simply list the properties of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. The second one is taking those properties and applying them to be able to classify a parallelogram as either a rhombus, a rectangle, or a square. Then we're going to start getting into algebra or just simple problems where we have to identify what angle measures are or what requested lengths are on either the angles or the sides of rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So when we begin this section, we first need to make sure that we have some vocab down. We have three words that we need to focus on right now, rhombuses, rectangles, and squares. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So remember, we denote four congruent sides by having our tick marks on our parallelogram. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles. So remember, we're going to see these right angle boxes. And then a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four congruent right angles. So make sure you have this down, pause if you need to. So what I've done here is I've set up a Venn diagram that kind of explains how the rhombuses, rectangles, and squares all relate to each other. We have these things rhombuses, right? And we just said that they are parallelograms with four congruent sides. But then we also have these things called rectangles, which are quadrilaterals, parallelograms, with four right angles. Now, when these two things happen to overlap, we get this thing that is like our hybrid. It's called a square. So where our rhombus and our rectangle overlap, we have the square, which means the square possesses properties of both the rhombus and the rectangle. So we're going to look at classifying these quadrilaterals. Um, in order to do this, I need to remember what my properties are and then use them to determine what kind of quadrilateral I have. So the directions say determine the most precise name for each quadrilateral. Okay, so let's see. This first picture, I see that I have a parallelogram because I have two sets of parallel sides. So that's good. Now the next thing I see is that I have all of my sides congruent. So I know I have a rhombus, okay? But I have to see if I can get more specific. Do I know anything about my angles? Are my angles all right angles? No, they haven't given me those little boxes in my corners. So I know this is not a rectangle. So what I'm gonna put here is that this is a rhombus. It is not a rectangle. So then what that means is it cannot be a square. So I know that the most precise name I can get for this object is a rhombus. Okay, let's look at the next example. In this example, again, I see my parallel sides, my two sets of parallel sides. So I know that this quadrilateral, this four-sided shape, is a parallelogram. Do I have all of my sides being congruent? No, I don't. And do I know anything about my angles? No, I don't. So all I can say this is, for sure, is a parallelogram. I cannot get any more specific because I do not have all, para or all congruent sides and I do not have all congruent angles or right angles. So then I also have two for you to try. Remember, you are looking for all congruent sides and all congruent angles, but you first have to check to see that you have two sets of opposite sides being parallel. Now here we have two theorems for you. These theorems both have to do with the rhombus. Okay, you see that if 
the parallelogram is a rhombus, then blah, 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 blah. So in our first theorem, theorem 613, it says if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals are perpendicular. I would highlight that if I were you. I would make sure that I knew that the diagonals are perpendicular in a rhombus. So then here's a picture that I've given you to kind of show you that. Your diagonals go from opposite angles, okay? So when those two diagonals intersect, right here in the middle, I know that they are perpendicular, or I'll see this little right angle box, meaning 90 degrees. In theorem 614, I see again that I'm talking about a rhombus. So if a parallelogram is a rhombus, then its diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles. Now remember, bisect means cut into two congruent pieces. So I know, looking at this picture here, that every angle is going to be split into two congruent pieces. One and two are congruent. Five and six are congruent. Also, three and four are congruent. Seven and eight are congruent. And because this is a parallelogram, if I were to like extend these sides here, I have a transversal, which means that like three and eight, those are alternate interior, so they're congruent. Seven and four, alternate interior. Um, actually, those ones aren't, I take that back. Three and eight are alternate interior, so they're congruent, okay? So I have three, eight congruent, but seven and eight are congruent. So three, four, seven, and eight are all congruent. One, two, five, and six are all congruent. So here we're looking at a couple of problems. Um, the first one here says, what are the measures of the number angles in rhombus A, B, C, D? So these angles, one, two, three, and four, they want you to find what the actual measures are in degrees. Okay, so I'm thinking about those two theorems that we just learned, and I recognize right away that I have a rhombus, which means that my diagonals intersect perpendicularly, which means angle one must equal 90 degrees because that is where my two diagonals intersect. The other thing I recognize was this whole opposite angles bisected thing. So I see a 58 here, which means that two is 58 and so is three. So I know angle two is 58 degrees and angle three is 58 degrees. I also have angle four though, which I need to find. So when I look at this picture, I see a triangle right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add up the measure of angle one and angle three. So 90 plus my 58 gives me 148. And I'm going to take that and subtract it from 180 because we know that every triangle has a total angle measure of 180 degrees. So when I do that, I'm going to carry, I get 32. So I know that the measure of angle 4 is equal to 32 degrees. So there are all of your angle measures. We've determined what they are using the two theorems that we just learned. So now I have a problem for you to try right down here. I'd like you to go through. Remember, you're looking for angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. We have one more theorem we have to talk about for this lesson, and that's theorem 615. Now, this theorem has to do with rectangles. Okay, so before we learned about rhombuses, now this is a theorem about a rectangle. So if a parallelogram is a rectangle, then its diagonals are congruent. The diagonals are congruent within any rectangle. So if you look at this picture here, the diagonals, remember those go from opposite angles, my diagonals are going to have an equal length. They are going to be congruent. So now we're gonna use what we just learned about diagonals being congruent in order to determine the length of the diagonals. Sometimes you'll be asked for the value of x, sometimes you'll be asked for the length of the diagonal, sometimes you'll be asked for each of those. So please be careful and make sure you know what you are being asked for. So if I look at my first example here, SF, is 2x plus 15. 
our b is 5x minus 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two expressions and I am going to set them equal to each other because I know that my diagonals are congruent or that they have equal length. So then I'm just going to go ahead through and I'm going to solve. Need to add my 12 to both sides. And this gets me 3x equals 27. And when I divide that 3 out, I end up with x equals 9. Okay, but my original question said, what is the length of a diagonal? It doesn't matter which one because they're the same length. So all I have to do now is take this 9 and I need to plug it back in. So I'm going to plug in to this expression right here. I have 2 times 9 plus 15. That's, oops, that's 18 plus 15, which equals 33. So I know that 33 is the length of a diagonal. Okay, so then you have a U try. They haven't drawn a picture for you. However, if you just sketch out a picture for yourself, you'll be fine doing that. Or if you just understand that these are your two diagonals that they have given you, um, you are looking for the value of X and for the length of each diagonal. So please make sure that you have that done for tomorrow. I'm going to be checking your notes and I'm going to also be checking your U try problems. So have a great night tonight. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Also, one last reminder, you do have your Florida Focus due this Friday. So that only gives you three more evenings after tonight. So please make sure that you are working on that. Have a great night, and I will see you in class tomorrow.